Sean said, F black youngster, f yo got it, f money bag. I ain't even finna sit over here and play with no n do all this extra. Man, you just to know. I let you do that shit. Uh, money bag crosses, man, you know, it's forever. He smoke for life. You know, he did a song with a dude, kill one of the homeboys. He got his face on him, on the TV. All of them got his two name tattoo. I don't know if he just did some stuff that you can't never come back from. So, you know, it's smoke. If you was more loyal, if you showed me more loyalty, if you showed me more, you know what I'm saying, like, if you was with me before all that. Moneybag Yo is known for his explicit lyrics. A lifestyle of crime that deputies say led to 28 people being locked up on Sunday after law enforcement barged into Club Maserati off of Highway 70. What up, gang? Back with the real. You know what's the deal. Mr. I got time today, F it, I'm crossing the line today, might have crossed the wrong line. Memphis rapper Moneybag Yo has risen to be one of the most played artists in the industry for his street lingo and authenticity of his catchy music. From club bangers to hood anthems, Moneybag is on his A game, but lately his realness is under attack and fans fear the same may be for his life after his past betrayal of his old gang is seemingly exposed. It caught everyone off guard with everything that's come to light but just what the hell is suddenly going on around bro's life? Well, we gonna chop it up and break it down and see who from his past is back to haunt him and if he needs to get more protection from the target on his back. Where he became Moneybag Yo, the blood cousin of 3-6 Mafia's Crunchy Black. Moneybag yep. Yo, he just, he political all uh, straight. He wild as fuck too, that's my cousin for real. Was Demario Dwayne White Jr. from South Memphis, Tennessee, trying to make ends meet with his single parent mother and two other siblings. Having to struggle every day to make it, he was tempted to go the route of the street life from a young age. At around the age of 14, Moneybag would begin venturing further from school as women in the streets entice him the more he got involved with that lifestyle. When I was in school, I skipped school a lot, shot dice under the bleachers. You know, the typical hood nigga shit. Oh, just didn't really go to school, stayed out, smoked. Did all the, the shit I wasn't supposed to do. By the age of 15, he had already jumped off the porch and soon after, dropped out of school altogether. And it was around the time like I had my first little girl, so it was a lot going on. And I dropped out of school around that time too. Even if he didn't complete the 12th grade, he had the smarts to grind, hustle, and get it out the mud. The block on Haravan became a frequent spot where he hung out and conducted in dealings in the streets and even nearly lost his life. In that clip, he mentioned a specific name that plays a big role in the alleged attempt on his life where one woman was left with two bullets and had to be hospitalized. We'll come back to that later on. Now, Moneybag was all but a hood dude at this moment doing what he had to do to blow. But as fate would have it, something worked its way into his mind. Moneybag had a love for hip hop music and listened to legends like Boosie, Yo Gotti, Juvenile, and Future. As a kid, I listened to Gotti, Boosie, Juvenile, uh, Future, like <laughs> stuff like that. So it only made sense that being in a room of homies rapping and getting money, he would have the idea of why not doing that himself. It would start as just a way to make it out the struggle, but over time, he realized he had a passion for it, and that's when Moneybag Yo became Moneybag Yo. But when something seems too good to be true, it most times is. At one of his family annual picnics on August 8th, his street life spilled into his personal life, and he was shot at. Luckily, he made it out unharmed, but was arrested for the altercation. Going to jail, and this little, this little time out, we, uh, we, we had this, uh, this picnic, we have we we usually have it every year, August eighth, uh, and we got I got shot at, and it was the worst thing she probably could have been through in that time. Back out and able to focus on his music, Moneybag Yo released his first official offering to the streets in February 2011 with the song "F You Pay Me," and it actually had a vibe. Whatever cash Moneybag made from the streets, instead of splurging or gambling it away like some of his peers, he would spend down to his last, investing in studio time and other things push and improve his music quality. Then, 2016 came with the mixtape that really made some noise in the streets. Federal, which represented the rapper's breaking point where he stopped caring and let everything he was holding in out. The tape was released under his very own bread gang label, which he owned. The name of his movement came about after hearing it within bars of a Yo Gotti song. By this point in his career, his buzz was getting around and the financial game began flowing in from show gigs. 
After he got his first $2,500, Moneybag was locked in with a greater dedication and grind to take off. And then I started getting booked like Chicago and stuff. It started spreading like Indianapolis. It started just spreading. Moneybag Yo would, however, soon find out that juggling illegal and legal careers don't go together. While having a release party for a CD on March 13, 2016, at the former Maserati Club on Highway 70 in Mason, Tennessee, cops would storm the club, confiscated 10 loaded guns, and a bulletproof vest and cash. Moneybag Yo, along with 28 other persons, who authorities labeled as gang members affiliated to the Vice Lords, Gangsta Disciples, Bloods, and Crips, were arrested for possession of controlled substance and gun charges. Sadly, after bonding out, his problems kept piling on. Tragedy soon again struck the rising star when his day one homie Elo losing his life to the streets between 2015 and 2016. This hit money back like a ton of bricks, losing both his day ones that supported him. My partner, my brother Elo, you know what I'm saying, he died, you know what I'm saying, like, he used to always tell me, like, bro, you gotta, you gotta keep going hard, even when I wanted to give up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and I got a, another brother before him, you know what I'm saying, sleeping, you know what I'm saying, both of them, like, I just feel like, you know what I'm saying, every time one of them died. He would honor his fallen homie by tatting his name beside his eye. He, he tatted on the side of my face, and now uh, Elo right here. And later that year, he would release a tape in honor of his name and life, Elo, Everybody Lives On. Moneybag was using the grief over his loss to elevate higher to his dreams for both them, himself, and his family. His tribute work to those dear to him that passed on brought a blessing in disguise. He would sign a deal under Endless Entertainment. And with the release of his mixtape, All Gas No Breaks, it was like everything was falling into place. It would catch the attention of CMG, Collective Music Group, Label Boss, Yo Gotti, and the rest became history. Yo Gotti would try to sign the rapper twice, but by the third time, they were already known through the streets and built up a solid trust and money back signed on the dotted line. But he had tried to like come my way like two, three times. I ain't just bite. And then like the third time, I felt like it was real sincere. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm finna see what's up with this. Yo Gotti blessed him with a 200K bag up front and money bag yo was finally up and about to level up his career. Right. Shit from you, no? <laughs> <laughs> Just when things seemed like they were too tough, pockets low, sleeping on cold floors, he kept the faith, put in the work, and his break finally came. You know what I'm saying? On the floor, you know what I'm saying? Assed out. Don't know where your next dollar finna come from. You just, you know what I'm saying? Just, I always kept faith. You know what I'm saying? I always prayed. You know what I'm saying? No matter how bad the situation got, I always knew, like, God gonna get me out there. I'm gonna get out there. I know I ain't gonna be in this long. Moneybag Yo got to celebrating the newfound success and joining the new cash flow with buying a white tiger. He was now stepping into the upper echelon of rappers, but the streets always collect what's owed. The money was good, but the path to get to it broke the politics of the hood where he grew up. This is where things began going horribly wrong for Moneybag, even with his growing popularity. Follow closely. Moneybag is from South Memphis. Yo Gotti is from North Memphis. Streetwise, the two sides don't get along and are beefing. Once Moneybag made that move to sign under CMG, it was instant hate and beef that came his way. God, I really couldn't do that. Right, yeah. right. Like, so he from North, I'm from the South. Yeah. They don't get along, so oh, it's like I went against my hood for that because I just saw a, a whole the bigger, bigger picture. picture. Yeah. So it, since I did that, and they like, it, like, I had a lot of hate. Suddenly, he was getting into beefs with dudes that he never met before and even people he dropped a tape with. In 2017, he would drop a joint mixtape with one of rap's biggest artists, NBA Youngboy, called Fed Babies. One moment, they were revealing the tape's success. The next, YB was uploading vids, dissing money bag, and not supporting the tape. Man, that tape. And I won't smoke. I ain't playing on my son. Moneybag kept his cool and didn't fan the flames, and eventually, the two seemed to have cleared the air behind closed doors. But where YB left off, 1017 label artist Rollo picked up. This and Moneybag along with Yo Gotti and label mate Black Youngster. Moneybag would break down where the issue seemed to stem from in an interview on The Breakfast Club, but Rollo claims that wasn't the case and Moneybag misinterpreted the situation and he only wanted his help in connecting him to Black Youngster and Gotti to squash their beef. With Moneybag, yo, before the incident happened with him and I, I actually was happy as fuck to go to the club to see him. I wanted to talk to the man and be like, listen, dawg, I ain't got no beef with nobody on CMG, dog. I don't even really want to deal with that shit. That's what I was coming to do. Moneybag was trying to stay clear of the drama, keeping it moving, even with the bad energy surrounding his new fame. He would keep his distance from Memphis outside of taking care of family. Do you spend a lot of time still in Memphis? A little bit. I try not to be there a lot. Right, can't too, just really hang out. Too like, complicated? 
Too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully so, as he was now basically an A-list rapper getting 200K a show. But little did Moneybag know what was coming next would open up a hole to his past. In 2020, a clip of a recording from a prison inmate service online accusing Moneybag Yo of selling out. Uh, money bag crosses the line, and he, you know, he's forever, he smoked for life. You know, he did a song with a dude, killed one of the homeboys. He got his face on him, on the TV cover. I don't know, he got his two name tattooed on him. He just did some fast stuff that you can't never come back from. So, you know, he smoked. It used to be your mom, and he did a song with a dude to kill your mom. So, you know, it's forever. This song ain't gonna never stop. Turns out this dude used to be money bags day one. Not to mention a member of a group we came to find out was named Young Mob. He's known as Stupid Duke, so you know off the rip, Bro must be some type of Memphis savage. Receipts even popped up confirming Moneybag was with the crew. Up to this point, no one outside of the streets really knew that about Moneybag, or well, the majority of fans either way. And the things that came to light was crazy. Duke said Moneybag was working with the ops. All right, we gotta backtrack a bit here. In this clip from a Vlad interview, Moneybag was saying that dudes are hating for nothing because no one even got murked, so it shouldn't be an issue with him signing the CMG and getting the bag. The opportunity, you know what I'm saying, like, it, it's like, bigger for you to make shit. millions, like, it's bigger than this shit, bro. Yeah. Like, cut this shit out. Like, nobody didn't get killed over this shit anyway. Like, leave it alone. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's keep going. While this is true, someone did get shot, though, which adds credibility to Stupid Duke's claims. Let's go back even further to around 2010, where everything really connects. During Thanksgiving weekend that year, in the parking lot outside Level 2 nightclub, there was an altercation that left six people shot. Guess who were the people in the altercation? None other than Yo Gotti and someone by the name of Lance Taylor. Remember that name I told you to keep in memory earlier that Moneybag Yo said he grew up in the hood with? Yup, same guy, OG Boo Dirty. He's also Stupid Duke's blood brother. Okay, so you and Boo Dirty, is it, are y'all like brothers, friends, that's your big homie or like? Can you tell us more? No, no, this is my real blood. This is my blood brother. Seems Young Mob is full of savages, because this dude's credentials range from an arson charge, two attempted second degree hit charges, and according to court affidavits, he was the trigger man in the shooting outside Club Envy around that time. And full circle it comes. So Moneybag was well aware that this beef and bad blood was personal and involved his crew. If there were still any doubts, check this out. OG Boo Dirty dropped a diss song, Get Him G, Back in the day, towards Gotti and in the vid, there's Moneybag Yo repping OG Boo Dirty. Dude wasn't letting off the gas. Taking shots online, and other affiliates joined in targeting Moneybag Yo and those connected to CMG before releasing a diss track towards Moneybag. Moneybag Yo would respond on the track, thinking out loud, off his 2020 album, Time Served. This prompted another diss response from Duke, keeping the same energy. After that, the story got even wilder. Someone claiming to be Moneybag's dad, then came out accusing Moneybag of selling out, and switching up after fame, he posted receipts of Moneybag with his past day ones before he blew up. Things seem to be looking crooked for Moneybag, like he's following the paper trail no matter which side he gets it from. With targets placed on his back, Moneybag might have betrayed the wrong crew. Things dumbed down for a bit, but in September 2020, where he was celebrating his 29th birthday with his shorty Ari in Las Vegas, shots rang out at his party, injuring a female rumored to be Ari's friend before the shooters escaped. Moneybag would deny he was the target, but would he really admit it and have the law on his back? Shot at who? And them was shot at us, man. I'm in a Maybag right now, man. In April 2021, Stupid Duke was out of prison and back home, so who knows where things will turn next. Moneybag has blown up even further and doing amazing things in the rap game. Hopefully things don't escalate past this point and some sort of truths can be made.